or someone should, you know, have the, uh, you know, the information provided later on. There was a meeting. We talked about this. This is how it went. You know, far too often when government conducts business behind closed doors, there are other things talked about. Things that require spending tax dollars, your money, that you pay the government to conduct business. I think, just like Mr. Morgan would argue that nobody has done more for transparency and open government than he, I think there are others who would say that that we should go further with regard to transparency. There are folks like me who believe we are walking backwards the transparency that has been uh, worked toward in the city of Heber Heights since 2015. Prior to that, I think we were, a lot of us were questioning the transparency of city government, how some projects went certain directions and why we have certain projects today because a lot of it isn't always disclosed in the open meetings that we are only privy to. We're not privy to the closed meetings that happens in the back room or at restaurants or via phone calls or via private emails, text messages. We're not privy to all that. So I think it's important to have all that out there. There are, in my opinion, council members, council member Otto, council member Shaw, who do add some pushback to that. There are other council members who disagree with them. And I don't think everybody agrees with anybody 100%. But we do appreciate when government officials work toward a more transparent government. All right? So that was the opening. We played the citizen comment, the exchange between uh, the citizen and Mr. Morgan. We played Mr. Morgan's explanation when he opened the conversation. Like I said, you can go back and listen to the meeting, July 2nd. August 5th, they came back to discuss this issue. It was an ongoing issue. Oh, let me backtrack a little bit. Prior to that, this was given to the Public Records Commission to come up with the ideas behind this proposed adjustment to public records. July 5th, there's no video for that. When you're dealing with public records, shouldn't there be a video that we all could review? Yes, there's minutes, but are all the things said on the minutes? No, it's 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 a summary of what happened at the meeting. Now, going forward, if the city of Huber Heights is truly committed to transparency and an open government, which there for a while I was very impressed with the, the new open gov portal. I was very impressed with different things being announced at council meetings. It's, uh, you know, I, I disagreed with Mayor McMasters on quite a bit, but one thing I didn't disagree with him on was transparency. He provided yet long meetings, but meetings full of transparency. All right. But July 25th, the Public Records Commission meeting, we can't view that because it's not online. The city should put these meetings online. Every one of those meetings should be recorded and uh, for all of us to view. That's my opinion. August 5th, council reconvened. The Public Records Commission had met. And here's how that uh, discussion went. This is a lot shorter, so here you go. And next up is item 3R, the city public records policy. Okay. Mr. Rogers. Um, you missed one. Board and commission. I think they were reversed on the meeting notice oh, and okay. the agenda, oh, so okay. you're, you're right. That's the one we were going with. Um, what we have here is some proposed revisions to the city public records policy. We had had a discussion about this at the last uh, work session. 
and um, mainly these changes focus on um, defining a process for handling uh, requests that are determined to be overly broad or ambiguous. So um, we did, uh, with the help of Jerry McDonald, draft some changes to the policy around those uh, items and um, took this policy revision to the Public Records Commission, which met uh, several weeks ago. And uh, the uh, changes were unanimously approved by the Public Records Commission. Um, the Public Records Policy is a policy that is adopted by the City Council uh, for the City. So uh, we have legislation here with these proposed changes, um, which would adopt and codify uh, these policy changes as part of this public records policy. And um, to highlight the changes, there is a, a red line copy um, of the proposed changes uh, included in the packet for your review. And Jerry, I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to add. Any questions or comments regarding the findings of the Public Records Commission? Any objections to moving this forward to the meeting? Okay, no discussion on August 5th. Now, August 13th, they come back, they reconvene, and then they discuss public records again or bring up the topic. Next up, we have item 11B. Item 11B, an ordinance adopting and approving a revised public records policy for the city of Huber Heights consistent with Ohio public records law at the first reading. Mr. Rogers, comments? Uh, this is, again, a discussion we've had um, at a recent work session involving some revisions to the public records policy for the city. Uh, these revisions deal with requests of an overly broad or ambiguous nature and defining those um, a, a little more clearly. Um, the law director, Jerry McDonald, was involved in the drafting of these revisions. Um, the revised policy was approved by the um, Public Records Commission unanimously and uh, recommended to City Council for approval. Um, so as far as action tonight, this is an ordinance, and it is at the first reading. It would be Council's wish if you wanted to um, have a second reading of this or to waive the reading this evening and adopt it. Uh, yeah. I'd, I'd recommend there's, uh, I don't see an emergency reason for this. I would, uh, it would be my recommendation for a second reading. I don't know if that's what council would agree to. Okay. Any objections to moving this to a second reading? Okay, we'll move that to a second reading at the next council meeting. And next up we have... All right. Yeah, they moved it to a second reading. That's good. There was plenty of time for citizens to discuss this piece of legislation or review of public records. I I don't remember doing a podcast on this. I think maybe I spoke about it a little bit. But I think it's more important now to really look at it and, and discuss it a little further and, and question why it was done the way it was. Well, August 26th, the second reading was here and the vote. And I think you'll get a sense of where we're at with that on this clip here. And next up, we have item number 10, which is pending business. Uh, 10A, I apologize. Ms. Powell. Item 10A, an ordinance adopting and approving a revised public records policy for the city of Huber Heights, consistent with the Ohio public records law at the second reading. And Mr. McDonald, do you have comments? Uh, yes, this was um, put together by the public records commission, brought to council at the work session. Um, the only real substantive change is to strike out a provision that said the city may accommodate certain requests, even though by law it's not required to. Um, we decided just to take that out completely and just do what we're supposed to do. And then we uh, simply added in definitions and things like that from the Ohio Revised Code to better explain uh, some of um, our public records, uh, what it means, how to make the requests, and things like that. And the... Um, recommendation at the work session was to adopt. Yes, that is correct. Work session recommendation was to adopt. I have a motion. Mr. Hill? Move to adopt. Do I have a second? Mr. Shaw? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on this particular item? Mr. Morgan? Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> uh, 
Mr. McDonald, I understood that we were also um, reducing the amount of time that we considered a record a record, but I didn't see that in here. Did, did I just have a misunderstanding, or what's the policy on that? That is a record retention policy, and that's not part of this. This is just our public rec well, public records policy on how to, to obtain public records, things like that. The length of time that you take to keep one, to keep a record, is something that has to go through certain forms that um, are through the Public Records Commission and then sent to the Ohio Historic Society to get approved. And we have not set any new retention schedules as of as of yet. He's not here to defend himself. That may have just been something I heard from Mr. Rogers. So I'll blame him. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Any other questions or comments regarding this proposed? Yes, Ms. Rado? I just really quickly, I'm not going to debate the merits, but uh, I believe after looking through all this uh, that it's unnecessary and further restricts our um, public records law. Um, I will be uh, against this measure. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, Ms. Powell, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Morgan? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mrs. Burge? Yes. Mr. Otto? No. Mr. Lyons? Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. Mr. Webb? Yes. Mr. Shaw? No. And motion carries 6-2. All right. So, a quick point to make on this. If adjusting the public records was strictly about preventing private information to be released as a public record, that was an easy fix. That was an easy fix, in my opinion. Just state, no personal information can be released. The public records administrator must review all public records before releasing them. Simple. It didn't have to be more restrictive. And another thing to point out, the question that Mr. Morgan brought up about retention of public records. Is it a smaller length of time? I say raise it to the greatest length of time allowed by law. Say it be 10 years. Keep the public records as long as you can. Five years, seven years. I know, what, what is it? Tax documents need to be kept five to seven years. Um, or different business documents. I think it's, yeah, five years, seven years, something like that. Why would you shrink the amount of time to keep a public record? What was the intent? I don't know. I have suspicions as to why this was brought up. And I think you may have suspicions and questions on your own. So I believe with this ordeal. These questions and the questions you may have about this subject should be answered by your city council, our city council. Now you can email them your questions if you have any questions about this. And I'll, I'll, I'll let you know their emails. And you'll have to do a ward locator to figure out which ward you're in. Ward 1, Richard Shaw, rshaw at hhoh.org. Ward 2, Don Webb, D-E Webb at hhoh.org. Ward 3, Seth Morgan, S Morgan at hhoh.org. Ward 5, I'm sorry, Ward 4, Andy Hill, A Hill at hhoh.org. Ward 5, Mark Campbell, M. Campbell at hhoh.org. Ward 6, Ed Lyons, E. Lyons at hhoh.org. Now, your at large council members. The first one is Nancy Burge, N. Burge, B Y R G E, at hhoh.org. Glenn Otto, G. Otto at hhoh.org and Mayor Jeff Gore at jgore at hhoh.org. Now you can email them your questions and it becomes a public record <laughs> as we've talked about. Or you can.